Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Today I want to review the Solinko Blackout 300. This is the more powerful version of the previous racket I reviewed, this Whiteout 98. I liked that one a lot, thought it had a good mix of power, some control, good spin potential, a decent feel as well. Just felt like the string that was a bit lively. And this one is more of everything. It's definitely more power. You have 100 square inches, so quite a lot of real estate. The string pattern is, is obviously more open then. It's quite an open 16-19 pattern and get a little bit lively, uh, which is meaning that the ball has a tendency to launch off the string bed. It also kind of has a short um, string bed lifespan. It, it, when you have a lot of movement in the string bed, the strings will last a shorter time. So uh, it definitely, definitely eats strings, this racket. Um, it has some good things, of course. it's. Uh, uh, very powerful, very spin oriented. You're gonna get a lot of action on the ball as long as you attack it. Did notice a bit of lack of touch and feel. I wasn't alone in testing this racket. I had Matthew and she trying this frame and we all noticed a little bit of a lack of control and touch. That was mainly the things that we lacked from this frame. So otherwise uh, good power frame, but a little bit underwhelming in terms of the feeling on impact. And I tried it both with Solinko Tour Bite and with Grapple Snake Tour Sniper and uh, neither string really fixed the control. It's a pretty powerful and lively racket. Very typical power racket uh, specs. I uh, can go through them here, um, 100 square inches, 27 inch length, that's very standard, 300 grams or 10.58 ounces, balance unstrung, 31.5 centimeters or 9 points head light. So a little bit lowish swing weight, but you know, that's pretty common these days that these rackets have a little bit lower swing weight, which is fine, you know, more maneuverability, you can always add some weight to it if you want. The tech I don't really know a lot about because I can't access the websites to usually check and, and read about the different technologies. I haven't been able to talk to Solinko about it as well so far, but I will update my written review on tennisner.net with the tech, but I think it's pretty standard. Usually there's not a lot of innovation going on in tennis rackets, as you might know. So it has kind of a, a 40T carbon fiber structure. Um, the weight control module is something that's listed on the racket as a technology. I have no idea what that means. Power flex zone, weight distribution, how the racket flexes, and liquid crystal technology. So these things I don't know a lot about, so I will update uh, this review after I do know these things. Um, powerful weapon, of course, like the... Solinko is more famous for their strings. They dabbled in rackets. Now they're attacking the market a bit more with some, some rackets. Like the 98 was a little bit too much action in the string bed. This one is more of everything, more power, more spin, more launch angle, bit crazy, wild racket in many ways. And not for my game. I'm playing with a flatter trajectory, trying to hit more through the court. Uh, Matthew, he plays with a more kind of extreme grip, more towards Western. Bit more top spin he liked it more but he didn't find that connection uh, with the racket and didn't feel 100 percent connected on touch shots it got better the more he played with it but still if compared to other rackets then there's so many rackets to compete with in this market with power frames uh, he actually had a, quite a few others that he preferred he thought it was a good frame but something missing a little bit it felt a little bit hollow disconnected you didn't feel 100 percent confident when you were playing with it and that's one of the most important parts of a racket and I also felt the same although my game fits this frame even less but I always try to go at every test with an open mind and I test all kinds of rackets I test beginner frames tweener frames 100 square inch power frames spin monsters everything pretty much and uh, I try a lot of 100 square inch rackets every year uh, everything from your, you know, your next ESO 100s to uh, head instincts or booms to Wilson clashes or ultras, bubble up drives, pure drives and pure arrows. And compared to many of those, this one doesn't really cut it in terms of the feeling and, uh, you know, the connection to the ball that's so important. It is a good frame in terms that it didn't feel any discomfort, although it is supposedly a stiffer frame, or you're getting a lot of energy return, has a thicker beam, 
and uh, it's definitely a powerful frame but I didn't feel any problems with the comfort but the rest uh, the, the feeling and the control from the string bed wasn't quite there compared to for example an arrow I feel like I despite that racket being quite stiff harsher than this frame I feel like I get at least a sense always of where the ball is going I'm playing with more confidence with that frame that would be a comparison uh, that I think hope and that, that I hope makes sense so yeah, not quite there for me. Uh, definitely prefer the Whiteout 98 a lot more, as did my fellow playtesters. They also felt like the Whiteout 98 was, was a better frame. Uh, not sure if they have something different in the layup that changes that, um, I can't say. But they do feel a little bit different, and it's not only the head size, that's just my feeling. I feel like this is a little bit more, you know, uh, hollow and, and not so connected. So. That's my, my opinion about the Solinko Blackout 300. Uh, power and spin in abundance, but lacking a little bit in terms of feel and touch. It wasn't for me, I didn't feel the confidence to play well with this one. I did struggle to control the ball um, with my flatter shots, and I didn't particularly like the feel so much. So that's the verdict of this one. The White Up 98 that was, had a completely different perspective on, which is interesting. And I did try several different strings in, in both of these rackets and some different tensions. But yeah, the whiteout is, is a better frame for me and my game. If you need power, if you need help with this and you like Solinko, check this one out. A lot of power, a lot of spin. But it, it's not going to be that easy to compete with the, the other players in this category, which is pretty much everyone. So everyone has this kind of powerful spin rackets these days. Okay, that's it for this one. I hope you find this racket review useful. That's my main uh, goal, to really give you my thoughts. Obviously, uh, I cannot tell you everything, and uh, it's always interesting to watch other reviewers as well and see what they think. Uh, but this is my opinion, along with my fellow playtesters. We always you know, address the rackets uh, you know, with different strings. We discuss, we compare and our opinions and so on. So we're trying to give you a pretty well-rounded opinion. That's the general consensus from, from me and the guys. So that's where we are with this frame, this Linko Blackout 300. Uh, I hope you like this review. Please subscribe to the channel. If you do, please also check out Patreon. If you want to be a tennis nerd insider, get some uh, you know, news before everyone else, trying to give you a bit more premium information on that channel. Uh, also check out TennisNerd.net, my Instagram channel, TennisNerd Insta, and so on. And if you want to support the work I do, you can also buy something uh, through my affiliates, the links are in the description. Use those links, I get a small commission, no extra cost to you, big help for me. Thanks, if you do. That is all for now, have a nice day, and don't forget to play some tennis.